hi. Um, how do I activate? Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, notes. Oh yeah, I had to leave like abruptly in the last time. Um, detect corner that a human would see. Yeah, I think we wanted to do this in a time. A time or location based way. Maybe we need both. I could think of either one of these being not enough. But let's just pick one for now and do one. Um, we were in the middle of doing one of the two ways. Uh, do you remember which? Yeah, I think we were trying to do 15, like, because, yeah, we have distance here. Distance. All right. Um, so then, ball, no. Was it ball drop? Yeah, ball drop. Uh, where are you? Hit corner Q. Hit corner Q. Okay. So we will need to know what location it hit the wall prior. Um, and the location that it hit the wall now, I guess. And we are updating the prior every time it hits the wall. Cool, that all seems good. Um, And then we call hit corner Q. So hit corner Q, we just need to detect whether we hit the wall. Um, and maybe we can have like, so it'll return a Boolean, yes or no, did it hit the wall? And then we can, uh, actually, how about you? take the wheel and talk about what you I have thoughts about what can happen right now but I'm curious what your thoughts are about what should happen and and how um well yeah so we will be taking this um yeah so basically this you'll take the distance yeah. And if it's within 15, as you have it, then uh, we will consider that a hit. A hit. Um, because so we it, decided that 15 is yeah. enough for the okay. human eye. At least without any testing, and then yeah. So then we should... Do we have a function that does... Oh, we do. Or uh, maybe... Oh, I think I wrote this uh, at the end of last time. Or near the end of last time. Alright, so we have... Uh, that squared plus that squared. Is that what you have? Not quite. Yours looked different. But you scrolled away. Um... I saw it a second ago. Oh, no, there it is. I square this. Yeah, so you need to square these. If you don't square it, it'll... I think it'll... How would that be different? It'll count the corners differently, the distance differently at the corner than at the uh, other corner. <laughs> um, anyway, none type has no 
the nun type is not subscriptable. So I guess we are calling. So you just ran this code and it's it's got a problem with this. What is the issue here? Why is it saying nun type is not subscriptable? Let me see if mine does that. How did you get that to happen? How can I reproduce that on my side? I just ran it and before it did anything. Yeah. I just did that. Uh yeah. Basically <laughs> looks like I accidentally made a file called colon w. RM colon w, can I do that? Yeah. Okay. Ball drop. Oh, okay. Yeah, that happened immediately. Oh yeah, okay. That makes sense. I think. Um so what's what's the issue? Why is that happening? Um, what does subs subscriptable mean? Subscriptable, uh, these square brackets are subscripts. So, um, let's bring up the error. So it's, uh, it's actually even right here. It's pointing out this is subscripting. This is taking P at subscript zero or at index zero. That's, it's saying that you're not allowed to do the uh, that operation like go to some index um, on uh, a none type object so here the only object that we're taking a subscript of is P so it, it was starting to evaluate this whole expression and it started here with this sub expression so it was going for this whole, well, probably it started off, Python started off encountering this whole sub expression or this whole expression. And then it decided to move down to this expression. And then to evaluate that, it needed to evaluate this expression. And then to evaluate that, it needed to evaluate this expression. And so far it was able to do all those things and then to evaluate this expression, it had to evaluate this expression, and that's where it finally came across an error. And the error is that none type is not subscriptable, so this thing, you can't do this to it. Whatever value is inside of the variable p, you can't do this. So why, and there's only one thing that has the type none type. Or maybe it's possible if you screw around with stuff to get Python to create another object of this type, but um, unless you're doing that on purpose, it, you're, prob you're probably not doing it by accident. So there's only one thing that can have the type none type, probably. Uh, so it's none. So P is none by the time the code gets here. So let's see if we can figure out why. How did that happen? Um, oh, I think we said and it And like what that. should we do about it? I think that's what we said it as. Um, yeah, we said wall has none. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, and let's see how long it takes for me to get there. There it is. Okay, cool. Yep. So we set it as none initially. Okay. So then, what should we do about that? Um, we don't want it to randomly have. We don't wait. Because if we set zero zero and then prior wall hit, is it going to solve that wall hit? And that's also zero zero. Then that would calculate less than fifteen. So um, we need to set them to a value where the distance between the points is not fifteen. Um. Uh, yeah, we could we could set it to a special value that ends up working out. Um. So we could set it to like infinity infinity so that it definitely doesn't count as a wall hit or something 
or zero zero, and the wall the ball starts off in the middle, so it definitely won't count as a corner hit. Um, or even if the ball did start out at zero zero, I guess it would make sense to call that a corner hit. <laughs> um, but uh, I of those two, I like the idea of infinity infinity better. Um, but there's another thing that I think is also makes sense, which would be to check whether wall hit even exists and whether prior wall hit even exists. So, um, something like if there is a wall hit and this other condition is true. I guess we would need to check whether there is a wall hit and whether there is a prior wall hit. Both of those would need to be true. Um, and conceptually, that makes uh, more sense to me. Um, I know that that's only ever going to be an issue for the very until it hits one wall and then another wall and then every time after that those two parts of the condition will be true hmm. um but i still like it better because it's still sounds more like what's actually that sounds more like what I actually want to check. I want to make sure that it has hit a wall and another wall. Uh Huh. I guess it's also okay if it hits the corner on the very first like if it hits exactly at the corner we don't want to make that not count <laughs> we need to make sure that if it hits exactly the corner that should count right mm -hmm. and the way that we currently have it that wouldn't count i think no i guess it would it wouldn't count One of, I, I guess we would need to check. Okay, let's ignore that for now or put a to do. Uh, to do. Make sure this works even if the ball hits exactly in the corner. Um, right away. Actually, at any time and right away uh and let's see the very first hit and subsequent hits okay um so yeah let's just pretend let's just deal with that later so i think it makes sense to oh okay wait wait did you get the corner, corner? Yeah, except it printed. It printed what? It printed a lot at one time. Oh, that's weird. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> as it's yeah. moving, when it hasn't yeah. hit anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, okay, so prior wall hit and wall hit and the distance is small enough, then the corner was hit. Okay. Uh, how, how are we going to deal with that? Let me put that in here. Uh, to do, I guess this to do can live here. Um, and then the one that you just 
noticed was um, to do, how would you describe the thing that just happened? Or what would, what note should we put here? Um, until ball, and if corner is hit and hasn't hit any other wall, I still think stuck corner is being hit. So we want to do something like uh, somehow incorporate that it has to actually be touching a wall <laughs> right here. Yeah. So how hmm. do we do that? How do we check whether it's hitting a wall? Actually, don't we have a bunch of like, yeah, we have, well, we have a Q stopped Q. I thought we had other ones for like left wall Q, right wall Q. We probably do. Oh, here they are. Hit left Q, hit right Q. Yeah, okay. So, uh, was that all of them? I guess so. So we want to make sure that we're hitting something. Hit left, hit right, hit ceiling, hit floor. Okay. So, what should we do? How do we make it so that it uh, doesn't keep saying that we've hit a wall or hit a corner? after we've hit the corner. How, how do we make it only say that once it hit the corner, like right as it hits the corner, and only then? Um, I guess... Um, we could change the if statement. Wait, if we move the hit corner cue into this, into one of these if statements, will it still be the same problem? Because it would uh, only run once if it hit the left Q, right? So then, after that. So yeah. So if we if we move this into here, let's say, so like something like that, um, then it will only check if it hit the corner if it just hit the right wall. Yeah, but can we add it to all of them? Yes, we could add it to all of them. Um, I think, though, that this is already uh, a lot of code duplication, and that well, we I can... want to avoid duplicating even more. You can make um, a single function and just duplicate there. Yeah, we could make all three lines into a function and then just call that function in all of these places. I think there's another idea, uh, another way of handling this. I think this other way of handling this would be a little bit better. This other, There's another way to handle it. What's another mm -hmm. way to handle it um you could change this the if statement to only run if it's actively hitting oh. or like you'd make a separate if like an if inside the if but the it that i was thinking about handling is the duplication here so if we want to 
do these two lines of code in all of these cases and this other line of code in all of those cases, what's a way where we don't have to repeat these lines of code here? The make a function that has that does those lines huh um what's a way where like even if even if we make a function we would still have to repeat the call to that function how can we make it so that we don't even repeat the call to a function how do we make it so that we still execute these two lines of code if any of these conditions are true this condition or this condition or this condition or this condition um is it something to do the only other thing i know that can call something is lambda i think is it something to do with that uh no it's uh it's actually easier than that more more lower uh level low level isn't really the right phrase uh something you learned before you even learned lambda what we want or what's a higher level way of saying if somebody said did i hit the floor or the ceiling or the left wall or the right wall what's a quicker way of saying that whole phrase um um wait uh did i hit the left wall did i hit the right wall did i hit the top wall or did i hit the bottom wall I mean, like, if a wall was hit, then do that. Yeah, so we want if a, probably self dot, a wall was hit, then we can take these two lines of code and put that there. And we don't need it in any of these other places. And we can take this and put it in there. So if a wall was hit, then do these two things. And this one. Um, this uh, we maybe want to do. Uh, so this isn't an action. This is just a, a, uh, a true or false thing. This is going to be either true or false. Um, so we want to say, like, if this is true, then do something. Anyway, so now we need an a wall was hit method. Okay, um... What would that look like? And I, I used a wall was hit, because that's literally what you said. Uh, if you want to change up the name, that's cool. A wall was hit, self... How do we know if a wall was hit? 
Um, we know a wall was hit. Yeah. If we hit the floor, or if we hit the ceiling, or if we hit the right, or if we hit the left. Um, Okay, how do we make that into Python? Yeah. Then or is this guy? Wait, no, what is or again? Uh in Python it's actually just the word or. Oh, that's boring. Yeah. Self dot hit floor or self dot hit ceiling. Yeah, looks like that's gonna take up a lot of space. Or self dot hit left or self dot right okay so now we have a function that says a wall was hit and then depending on which wall was hit we do one of these things um, and here we say if any of the walls were hit we'll update prior wall and wall A spider descending from the ceiling. Interesting. Um, and we will detect if we've hit the corner. So let's go fix up detecting if we've hit the corner. So we should here just return true if we just hit the corner and false if we did not. Oh, is that okay? You want okay? Yeah. Um. Hmm. Well, then you just turn this into return, right? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe we don't need. So if any wall was hit, we'll update the wall and prior wall, and then if a corner was hit, maybe then we can print, print, print. Uh, hi. No. Wall hit or no corner was isn't the whole point of is to put hit corner into wall was hit or else so that only would run if the wall was hit uh that because then that would only run once right we we could put this as like that yeah. Um, now we're, so, uh, this would still only run, we would have to modify this to, we could add in, like, and self dot, oh, that's why these are underlined, self dot, self dot, wall, uh, a wall was hit. I was thinking that we would have this check in mm. here because that is part of like this this is only true that's part of the condition of whether we've hit the corner we have to have hit a wall <laughs> yeah yeah that makes sense actually uh what is wrong here wall yeah um And we can only check this if uh, 
there is a prior wall hit and a current wall hit. So we need these two to be true. Anyway, that's why I was thinking that this wouldn't be part of, that the self.hit corner queue wouldn't be part of this, these actions that we do only if a wall was hit, only after checking that a wall was hit at this level. Um, but it actually makes sense either way. We only need to check if a corner was hit if we know that a wall was hit. Um, but then now we're checking whether a wall was hit twice, but that's that's okay. <laughs> um, let's see. It runs now. It didn't uh, die on me. Mm -hmm. As soon as I hit go. Okay. It's it's pretty hard to get a corner actually though. Still, maybe we should increase the well, acceptable no, just need, distance. Well, just clicking it correctly. Like I can't even get it to where it looks like you hit a corner. I see. I just got a couple where it looked like it hit the corner to me, and it oh, didn't say anything about hitting the corner. I think that also depends if you're going fast or not. True. Because sometimes when you go fast, you like that looks like it looks. Sometimes... Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should take that into account too. How fast is the ball going? That totally looked like it hit the corner, but it didn't say that it did. I'm going to try increasing to like a really large number just to make sure that the logic... That it's not like that the window is too small. It's just that the logic is... Uh, or that the logic is correct and it's not... We're not missing it because the, the window is too small. It's just, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to talk right now. <laughs> uh, let me try that again. Oh, yeah. We know what happens if it starts rolling. Uh, um, I think our logic for rolling, oh. um, it doesn't consider the wall to be hit. If it's rolling. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this has been closer than 150. I think our logic might be wrong. Okay. Well, our logic was working earlier a little bit. Um. When? I'm going to put a when... really, really big number now. Like, there's no way it's not working. Did you make a commit when it was working? Um. No. Dang. All right, so it is definitely hitting the corner by that metric. <laughs> uh. So I think the I think the code is wrong. What about for you? Oh yeah, you for you it did say Whoa, wait. It, it said so that it hit the corner and then it rolled away. And then I that's when I, I remember that now. That's when I got How, uh, or not it rolled away, but like until it hit the next wall, it kept saying that it hit the corner. Yes. Um hmm. Okay, I don't have it anymore. I probably exited it. Okay, that's sad. And that was when it was just if death hit corner, and then I ran hit corner. Um, yeah. So what meaningful change did we make? Um, 
we added self a wall was hit. That was the main thing. To only call it if a wall was hit. Or actually... Yeah, okay, so... Mm, is that logic wrong? It doesn't let's seem wrong. Really I want, let's see, I want to get rid of this. Like this, yeah. Bounce floor, that's good. Uh, okay. Bounce right. Floor. Okay. Left. Um, okay, that probably should have been close to close enough to a corner. Oh, like right there. Come on now. Yeah, I'm not seeing corner. Okay, that was definitely a corner just now. Okay. Oh, <laughs> my hit corner cue isn't actually returning anything, so there's my problem. Or, there's a problem with mine. Return. All that. Like, that looks like it's a corner hit every time right now. Let's see. Okay, so something's going wrong. Huh. Oh, yeah, mine should be saying corner now because my corner metric is like a very large number. Um, so that's broken. Why? So, it's still wrong. What is wrong about this? Um, we can do printf debugging. A wall was hit. So we can just start adding print information about what's going on. Um, let's see if that works. I'm going to try that out. Oh. Interesting. It should be saying a wall was hit right now. Because it's definitely hitting the walls. Okay, so maybe the a wall was hit logic is wrong. I thought that was pretty bulletproof, though. Let's see. Return self.hit floor or hit ceiling or all of these other things. Hit ceiling, hit left, hit right. What's wrong with this logic? I don't know. All right. Well, I guess let's go into self dot hit floor. Let's see. Let's see. Self dot hit floor return not rolling and liar prior lower edge. Lower edge. Oh, bounce floor modifies so when we call self dot hit floor and then we call self dot bounce floor 
that changes the next time we call self.hitfloor. What? If we call self.hitfloor, then we call self.bouncefloor. Self.bouncefloor changes the location of the ball so that self.hitfloor, the next time we call it, no longer returns true. Oh. Yeah. So we need to do this differently. We need to remember... Uh, whoops. So we should be able to... Before we do one of these actions, we should be able to check whether a wall was hit. Does that idea make sense? Or actually, how... Uh, let's confirm that thing that I just said. That this returns true, then this... So, self.hitfloor queue returns true, then calling self.bouncefloor changes the location of the ball so that the very next time we call self.hitfloor queue, it'll return false. Even if we do it right after this. So, how can we check, how can we confirm that? What's a what's an easy way to return to okay, so we can uh print hit floor. Oh wait, whoops, not hit. And then oh, print yeah. self dot hit floor q and yeah, so it should say hit floor and then if the thing that I just said is true, it should say hit floor and then false. Even though it had to be true to get in here. Yep. True. False. True. False. True. Okay. True. Bounce. False. True. Bounce. False. Okay. Then, um, how, so that is the issue. This is true. And then this changes. So hit floor Q is true. And then bounce floor changes the location of the ball so that it hit floor is no longer true. So by the time we get here, uh, we can't check whether we just hit. So what should we do to be able to detect whether we hit the corner? Um, something that we didn't want to do from the start. Uh, put this <laughs> in, into, into each, of each one of those. Yeah, that is one way that we could handle that. We could also another another thing that we could do is we'll put what? Put it in front of those ifs. Yeah, we could move it up here. Um, but then we have an issue, kind of a similar issue, where what if when we detect that a wall was hit, we then, uh do some action or sorry we, when we detect that any wall was hit we then move the ball in some way and then this will no longer return true even though it would have just before doing this code um the code that we have right now doesn't have that property so uh we can just do this for now um but that is something that could happen this code could mess up this code. Uh, and so there's, uh, there's a way around that too, which isn't just copy this code into each one of these branches. Um, actually, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't be enough. If we, even if we did copy this code into each one of these branches, we would have to copy it either just before self.bounce floor or just after self.bounce floor. And that, yeah, there could be weird interactions between the two. Um, the way around this, that or a, a way around this that I can think of is to, instead of 
right here, run the code that detects whether we've hit the floor, and then immediately react to the fact that we've hit the floor. Instead of doing that, um, run the code that detects whether we've hit the floor, and then save that into a variable, uh, and then run other code that detects whether we've hit any wall, and save that into a variable, and do all of the, the detecting of what state we are in before doing any actions based on that state. Mm -hmm. That way, we don't have this issue where we detect that some state is true, we perform some action based on that state being true, and then we can no longer do stuff based on what, what state we were in because now we're in a different state. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So... But for now, we should be able to just copy this right here. Let's try that out uh, and see what happens. Was that enough? A wall was hit. Okay, that worked. Uh, oh, it just said that a corner was hit. Oh, right, because my corner detection is really lax. Okay, so it, the corner detecting is printing now. Let's tighten up the boundary. Uh, or I'm going to tighten up mine and... I. I don't know where you're at. Okay, is so I'm at one, 150 is a little too much. A little um, too big or too small? Too too big. But I think 15 is too small. So I think okay. 30 would be good. Um, did I save? I did. Okay. Let's try running that. So I'm doing 150 now. Oh, interesting. So mine says that a corner was hit, even if it hits the floor several times in a row. So let's see if mine does that. I know that it's accepting a really wide range for whether a corner was hit, but I don't think that explains, or I don't think that justifies counting a corner when you hit the floor twice. So, I think my logic is wrong. Hmm. Uh, so, let me go see if I can fix that. Oh, yeah. You're right. It does do that. Yeah. Okay, so hit corner Q says was a wall hit. Oh. There there was a wall hit, there was a prior wall hit, and there was a wall hit just now. Then we check whether the distance between the two hits was small enough. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that makes sense that this isn't doing anything to, to make sure that one of these was like the floor and the other one was a sidewall, for example. So we need yeah. to add that somehow so this, in here. That would, this only applies though to the floor. Uh, right? no, it, it looks, it doesn't look to me like it, it differentiates at all. So if this hit the well, right no, wall twice somehow. But, okay, well, that's somehow. I don't think our game allows that to happen. Unless we change it later for it to happen. Yeah, like, so let's say happen. we get a power up that changes the gravity to be upside down or sideways. Okay. Good point. Okay. But yeah, you're right. For now, the only wall that could get hit twice in a row is the floor. So we could add a, a case for the floor and see if that works. So yeah. uh, what would you do for the floor? And then we can add a to-do for all of the other cases. I will go add that to-do and you uh, think about how to... Uh, to 
do um, make sure a corner hit is only uh, takes into account um, hitting to adjacent walls. Right now, it counts if it hits the floor twice. And uh, it should only count if it hits the floor, then a side wall. Bottom. Oh no. Um, it should only count. Uh, yeah. All right. So, what are your thoughts on? Did that not save? Save. All right. So, what are your thoughts on how would you change this logic so that? it only counts if it hits or so that hitting the floor twice doesn't count no matter um, how close i don't know because we only take into account position right now so the only thing i can think of is that the floor is probably close to uh 500 600 y or whatever our height is um, we could, but. in addition to, so right now we, we remember position in these two variables. We could uh, also remember which wall was hit. Um, what else could we do? We could also make it so that make a function that says we give it a location and it tells us which wall that is. And then we can mm -hmm. use that to make sure that it's two different walls. I think the easiest Something like would that. probably yeah. be the wall hit and prior wall hit remembering like also storing what wall it was hit. Um. Yeah, I don't, I think I wouldn't I would make new variables. I wouldn't store all of like location and which wall in this variable, for example. Um, and since we're already using this one for location, let's make a new one for the name of, of the wall. Do you want to store like the name of the wall? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Like floor, Again. ceiling, left, right. Huh. I feel like there is there any other way that you are thinking of? I don't know. I feel like this is. Um. The. Where's the code for detecting? Okay, so. Here. This hit left cue, hit right cue, hit ceiling cue. These things depend on upper edge and prior upper edge. Um, hit wall. Uh, wall hit? Is that what we called it? Yeah, okay. How does this get updated? So if a wall was hit, then we update it. And we started off being none. Um, hmm. Maybe we could say Oh, whoops, I gotta leave that there. Uh, if a wall was hit, then we do these things. 
Um... We need a function, yeah, I think we either need to add the code into each one of these branches, or we need a function that can say, given a location, which wall is it. Yeah. So like in bounce, wait, so are you saying like in bounce floor, we would, that's where we would... We could uh, store it, like in here. Um, every time it bounces. Uh no, not uh uh. When I said in here, I meant like inside as one of the parts of the code that runs due to this condition being true. Okay. Um. So yeah, now we are running into having to save conditions about the current state before running any reaction to that. Um... So, we would need to do something like have a section up here that just sets different state variables to true or false or whatever, and then a section down here that reacts to those different variables. Like right now, we are running code to determine whether we hit the floor and then immediately changing the ball's location based on that. Um, so if instead of doing that, so we need to remember the fact that we are hitting the floor and we need to detect that up here to detect whether we've hit the corner because it's important whether we're hitting the floor twice in a row we need to remember did we hit the floor last time um yeah so i think i think an easy the easiest thing the easiest thing that i can think of is to uh have a function that you give it a location and it tells you which thing which wall that is or okay. if any maybe um maybe to start with it'll just tell you whether it was the floor and then here we could see whether prior wall and current wall hit location are the floor and if they are then it's not a bounce i mean not a corner okay yeah um i don't know def uh position is floor and then All right, how can we tell if the position is the floor? Um, if um, wall hit um, wall hit zero is equal to is in between like let's say like five ninety five and six oh five. We have this variable height. I think it needs to be. Oh, right. Ah, oh, man. Yeah, this whole thing where 
it's traveling through time and we're only taking snapshots every so often. <laughs> so we can't say for any location whether that is the floor. We need a pair of locations to see whether it intersects with the floor, which is what we're doing here. And also we're making sure that we're not rolling. Um, I think we're, <laughs> wow, this is actually surprisingly uh, annoying. I, I think we're, I think w there isn't an easy way around. I think we're gonna have to do that thing that I was talking about where we set a bunch of variables based on what state we are in. Then we have a later section where we react to those different states. Um, I was thinking that maybe there was something where we wouldn't have to do that, but I, I think we do. We have to oh, yeah. set set a bunch of variables up here to do. Set a bunch of state variables uh, to indicate things like whether we hit the floor, oops, hit a wall, uh, which wall we hit, and then later Uh, to do once the state variables are all set, then take action base action based on the state. Uh, for example, um, bounce off a wall, change direction, uh, update location to not be, be inside the game, not partially outside, etc. Okay. Um, and we will have to pick up there next time. I know there's a lot of changes uh, that aren't committed, um, but we aren't really in a good place to make a traditional commit anyway. So I'm not sure uh, what the right thing to do is. Feel free to work on this between sessions. Um, I can always catch up to, you can always like send me the changes that you make. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, I'll see you next time. Yeah, thank you. See you. Bye. Bye.